Now it is time to take longer strides. Time for a great new American enterprise. Time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. Considering the fact that there are supposedly 100 billion galaxies in the universe, as revealed by the Hubble, and 300 billion stars including the Sun in our tiny corner of space, we are anything but relevant. It wasn't until the latter half of the 20th century that the rockets were powerful enough to reach orbital velocities, paving the way for space exploration to become a reality. On October 4, 1957, the Soviets launched the first artificial satellite, Sputnik 1, into space. Four years later, in April 1961, Russian Lieutenant Yuri Gagarin became the first human to orbit Earth in Vostok 1. His flight lasted 108 minutes, and Gagarin reached an altitude of only 327 kilometers. That's around 202 miles. In February 1962, John Glenn's historic flight made him the first American to orbit Earth, landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth within a decade was the then national goal of America. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth, safely to the Earth, safely to the Earth, safely to the Earth. September 2016, at the 67th annual meeting of the International Astronautical Congress, Elon Musk unveiled meaningful details of the interplanetary transport system, which we now know as the Big Falcon Rocket, BFR. The ITS was announced to be 122 meters tall, which later shrank down to 106 meters in 2017, and is subsequently standing at 118 meters in 2018, which is the equivalent to a 40-story building and is roughly the same height as NASA's Saturn V rocket that went to the moon. Once the rocket is complete, it will be able to take up to 100 tons of payload all the way to Mars. But the rocket has to be refueled in orbit by some kind of tanker spacecraft. In its final form, the BFR will be powered by 31 main Raptor engines that can provide a thrust of 60.8 meganewtons. Overall, the BFR is a combination of a giant rocket booster and a massive cargo spaceship, BFS, which can hold up to 100 passengers comfortably. The BFS, or the second stage, has two forward actuated flaps and two rear actuated fins which are supposed to act as control surfaces, meant to be able to control the vehicle through a wide range of atmospheric densities and velocities. The BFS boosting seven Raptor engines and the giant booster are meant to do powered landings, meaning they will use their engines to land on the surface of the Earth or other worlds. The landing process is akin to how SpaceX lands its Falcon 9 rockets presently. If we have a propellant depot on Mars, we will be able to get from Mars to the asteroid belt and then to the moons of Jupiter, kind of like a planet moon hop, all the way to the outer solar system. BFR is intended as an interplanetary transport system, capable of getting from Earth to anywhere in the solar system. SpaceX is currently developing the BFR at the port of Los Angeles, near the company's headquarters in Hawthorne, California. The company has shown off a few tests done on key components of the rocket, such as pressure tests on the vehicle's massive propellant tanks and ignition tests of subscale Raptor engines. SpaceX President Gwyn Shotwell believes that the company will be doing short hops of the BFS in late 2019. It's similar to the grasshopper flights that SpaceX did in 2012 to test out the reusable architecture needed for the Falcon 9. BFR could make its first flight to Mars in 2022, with people flying to the Red Planet as early as 2024. It's an aspirational goal, given that SpaceX's Falcon Heavy took nearly twice as long to complete than expected. The development of BFR will cost roughly $5 billion, and SpaceX is contributing less than 5% of the company's overall resources to the project right now. 
SpaceX should be able to fund the BFR by sending astronauts and cargo to and from the International Space Station, as well as launching satellites for the Defense Department and commercial customers. SpaceX's upcoming Starlink satellite internet constellation could help out as well. And of course, private individuals who want to use the BFR, such as taking artists around the moon, could be key benefactors. Thank you for watching the video all the way up to here. Just so you know, we are truly blessed to have viewers like you. If you want to support the journey, consider donating on Patreon. But keep in mind that our videos will always be free for you. Have a great day and keep asking questions. Ever since I was a kid, I have loved the moon. Just storing the moon filled my imagination. It's always there and has continued to inspire humanity. That is why I could not pass up this opportunity to see the moon up close.